I just want to give you another quick little story about the background of planetary boundaries from the Earth system science point of view. We've talked about uh, 2009 as the first paper, 2019 now, 10 years forward. I want to go 10 years back from the first paper and to this very building. In 1999, I was director of the IGBP. We were embarking on our synthesis project and we were having a workshop here on biogeochemical cycling. And we were diving into the great detail of phosphorus, nitrogen, carbon, and so on. But on the second day of the workshop, a paper appeared in Nature. It was the Petit et al. 1999 paper with the Vostok ice core, which appeared in the middle of Johann's sort of grand synthesis of Earth history. That completely changed that workshop. It changed the direction of the whole synthesis project. And in a way, it started laying the scientific foundation, from an Earth system science point of view, of eventually an idea like the planetary boundaries. Because for the first time, we saw clearly this very rhythmic, systemic behavior of the Earth system. And more importantly, we looked at this last unusually long interglacial, about a degree cooler than the ones before it. And then we tracked on that from our colleagues in the social sciences, what humanity, how humanity had developed, and the light bulb lit up in our minds that there was something special about the Holocene in terms of being a very accommodating home for humanity. So that basis actually started here in this building 20 years ago from today. And of course, that was bubbling in our minds as we went through the IGBP synthesis pro process. But we never put together the real ultimate challenge of how we're going to manage ourselves and our relationship with the rest of the planet. And of course, that took Johan's insights uh, to, to come forward and say, look, I think we need to get a set of guidance principles, really, is what the planetary boundaries are, for this planetary sweet spot, this Holocene-like conditions that we know are good. Optimists could say, well, humanity is so powerful, now we can live in other states of the Earth system, but there's absolutely no proof for that. So I think it was very interesting that, that this combination, this forward-looking thinking of what do we really need to build a comprehensive system-level guidance system, and the background flowing through from IGBP. So that's just a little historical note. I think now the challenge is now that we've developed over 10 years uh, this framework, Earth system science has become even more powerful, as Tim Lenton just said, in, in terms of tipping points, in terms of systemic change, and so on. I think our real challenge now, and the one we need to talk about, is where are we going to go with this framework, and how is it going to serve us in the future?